In this great free country of ours, we debate. We disagree, sometimes violently. But the mistake the totalitarians make over and over again is to conclude that debate in a free country is proof of weakness. We are not a weak people. We are a strong people. America has never been defeated in the proud 190-year history of this country. March is beginning, police car in front, lights flashing, immediately behind, a large uh, banner held across the road, peace demonstrations mar American violence. About 200 yards down the road are several uh, news cameramen, journalists. I, I understand you were one of the uh, students yesterday that marched down to uh, City Hall and asked the mayor to do something about the barricades. Yes, that's true. That's true. Did you, we, expect, we're trying uh, to did you expect what happened? Well, we reached a, uh, an agreement with the mayor that we would have limited police action, and that would only come from uh, park officials helping to, to take the barricades down with a few policemen just to make sure there were no spot fistfights or something like this going on. He, he granted us it would be a peaceful thing in concurrence with Dr. Wolf's uh, communication with him. And, and we, we did control, there was, a, there was a threat of a possible riot about 8 o'clock in the morning through some of the athletes and some of, some, excuse me, some of the strikers and some of the non-strikers. Well, that threat was, was, uh, was eliminated and there was some peaceful conclusions and things going on between the strikers and non-strikers until the mayor sent the police down, the riot squads down. I want to cry. I think it's time that the adults came forward and they helped our kids. I think it's time that we stop standing behind closed doors and saying that they're crazy and that they're nuts, that they've got long hair and they want to be radicals. Sure, we know there's radicals in all of them, but my God almighty, when are we going to step forward and start helping? When and when are we going to stop letting these kids stand up here and fight this battle by themselves? I think it's terrible. I don't see any mothers and fathers out there. It began as part of a nationwide student strike on a Wednesday in May. A small corps of early morning strikers rapidly grew in number and swept down Broadway. They were protesting the Cambodian intervention, the Kent State killings, the transportation of nerve gas into Oregon, and the imprisonment of Bobby Seale. Unlike previous demonstrations, the strikers searched for some permanence in their protest. Barricades were to become the symbol of their solidarity. And quite suddenly, the park blocks were enclosed in what was already a projected extension of Portland State's campus. In the island that drew them together, strikers wondered in frustration what more they could do. There was bandstand rhetoric, Factions formed and projected actions were disputed. Some decided to liberate the student center and its services. It became the great cheeseburger ripoff, which released the underlying animosity between left and right wing students. 
The first strike contact with the community began with a march to the induction center. While some passed out leaflets, others milled about the entrance, chanting, talking, and sometimes shouting at police. One girl threw herself forward and was roughly pushed away. While the bystanders stared, some in sympathy, many in disgust, one acted, indiscriminately spraying a liquid chemical in the face of a photographer. Already the faraway initiating events were forgotten. Portland had its own issues, and communication between strikers and the community was reduced to a purely symbolic level as an American flag was seized by the demonstrators and flown upside down. On the evening of the first strike day, the school was officially closed for the remainder of the week. The suspicion, anger, and mistrust had begun and there were still six days before a sense of unity was to emerge at Portland State University. You know, we're now um, approaching the town hall, large crowds standing on the pavements. Excuse me, sir, what is your reaction to this? Well, from the actions, this, this particular demonstration, I would say that I would much rather they went this way than uh, other things I've seen in the past. Uh, what did you think about the violence yesterday? I, I just think it's unfortunate all the way around. I mean, there's who's to cause, who's to blame. I think it's the times, really. What about you? How do you feel? I don't like it one bit. Not one bit. I just think that violence is a ridiculous way to do away with anything. These kids don't know what they're doing or what they're thinking. I'm not for war, I'm completely for peace, but I don't think that these kids know anything about anything. Nixon made the statement in the newspaper. She said that she couldn't believe that students were opposed to uh, 
the policies of her father. She just didn't believe that such a thing existed. So we put that up so that Patricia Nixon would know that such a thing definitely does exist. We didn't know about the jock, but we heard that the police were going to come come Monday morning and take him down. Well, it was rumor. We weren't really sure. Come Monday morning, the jocks started charging up and down the streets, and we knew that they were going to come down sooner or later. Well, we got a hold of some legal information that legally the jocks couldn't take it down, and legally neither could the police, because this was trash and litter on the streets. The only people that could do it legally was the sanitary department. So we said, we will yield Trisha to the sanitary department. However, it will be, you know, Trisha has been our home. We have slept here, you know, for seven days, and we will be the ones who take it down. When Trisha came down this morning, we had all vowed that we were going to stay till the 20th. And the people were really, they, they weren't uptight about losing the structure that we had created there. Because actually, the people were, they took it as a joke because we were the only people in the world that would create a ghetto so that we could live in it. And we weren't mourning the loss of Trisha, the physical structure, the symbol of, because we knew that Trisha lived. And she was living until they busted us this afternoon. And we lived, uh, and the coordinating committee at that time were even backing us to the point that Kevin, who was the chairman of the coordinating committee, came down to Trisha because Trisha was the first to go. And he said, Trisha lived, and the people were walking in the, on the crosswalk to keep the traffic out. So we all got up and started walking up and down. Well, this is all well and good, but within 20 minutes, a Volkswagen tried to run our barricade. So we were on the alert from then on. Five minutes later, another one tried the same thing, another Volkswagen, as a matter of fact. So we reconstructed a temporary barricade, which consisted not of the junk that was there before, but of the living room furniture that we had acquired, the sofas and the couches. Went back into the street. Well, there were other barricades that went up this afternoon, not totally, just partially. The police, when they came this afternoon, were not here to rip off those barricades but they saw the potential of those barricades coming back up and they wanted to crash everything out there to make sure they didn't come back up again. We know the history of what follows up. Uh, they were not there to, to take down the barricades. They didn't take down any barricades. They come through and they trashed and they beat the hell out of everybody. Then they went around on their collecting thing. Patricia, the reason we got busted on the head because we were foolish enough to sit down and think they would arrest us for uh, demonstrating to save the hospital out there. Are they staying together physically? As They're staying a group? together physically as a group. Those who were on Trisha before are on Trisha now. Bum, what are you uh, What are you going to do tomorrow now? Are you going back out to the? You know, I understand they're making paper barricades now. Yes, they are. Uh, I, I'm one of the uh, barricade people. I wear their armband, and uh, uh, I'll be with them quite a lot. Uh, I think they're going home to sleep now, so we don't have to worry about their safety tonight. Yeah, I'll be around with them tomorrow. Uh, they may have some trouble. We're having a faculty meeting at 8 o'clock. We, we hope the faculty will determine to try to protect the students. Uh, I think they will. It's getting wet out there now. Many people without umbrellas or raincoats just getting wet up, waiting. Have you, have you marched before? No, I haven't. Why are you marching today? Well, because I'm upset about the, the way that police treated the students last night at the university. The, the mayor has to face up to what he did. He's got to come out and talk to us. Are you going to leave now? No. Have you marched before? In the moratoriums, yes. But not with the student strike of last week. I manned a barricade uh, Wednesday morning until the uh, the faction split to come down to uh, downtown Portland and uh, create what I would call violence. And then I got out of it damn fast. Why are you back in it now? I had never really left the strike idea. I was against the violence idea. But we're going to try to talk to the mayor, and I think that'll be meaningful. Uh, the faculty meeting is still going. A, a resolution has been uh, squashed uh, for um, a recess. So that means it's been going for over two and a half hours now. We have uh, Mr. James Gleason here, the publications officer of PSU, who made a statement in the faculty meeting. And I'd, I'd like you to summarize that, Mr. Gleason. Well, essentially what I had to say was that until the attack by the tax police yesterday, I was essentially in the middle. I think I'm like a lot of people that uh, 
I see good and reason on both sides, and I hope that that would prevail. The actions by the tactical police yesterday obviously make it clear to me that the process has fallen down someplace and that the people who are in the middle must get the facts on situations like this and must start taking a stand. What, uh, what, what were some of the details? I believe you witnessed uh, some of the ac action yesterday. What, what was your reaction to that? What did you see? I was out in the park watch yesterday, a total of probably six hours. I was out about two and a half hours at noontime, as were a lot of the faculty, walking around, trying to cool things, trying to get people to talk together. And uh, then I, uh, the whole uh, thing and not getting any lunch made me pretty upset and I had a headache. I was going home at 4.30 and I saw the crowd gathering again because of the police. And I saw the whole activity through the police riot. And I uh, can say without fear of contradiction from anybody who was there that the police purely and simply attacked the students with, uh, to me, and no apparent reason other than we're going to teach those damn students a lesson. Okay, Phil, Phil Youngman, Ryan, Portland State student. How many stitches have you got in your head now? Seven. Seven stitches. Mm -hmm. Any concussion? No. Uh, okay, let's sit down for a minute. Now, where were you when the uh, tactical squad charged? What row center? <laughs> They're just right for the meeting in the background. Uh, why were you there? Well, I'd just gotten back. I'd left for about an hour and a half, and I'd just gotten back and walked over and realized that they were trying to tear down the uh, first aid station, mm -hmm. which seemed like a rather sensible fact. Mm -hmm. So I walked over there and saw many, many females in several rows and males, but a lot of females. So I decided to get in, you know, get in front and at least shield the females, thinking they'd push us back rather than try to you know, beat us to death. And uh, that was about it. I was just locked arm in arm with the rest of the students, waiting for the tactical squad to do their thing. What did you, uh, you know, what, what was your reaction when you saw that they were coming to you rather than throw tear gas or come in well, they were and move you out. jabbing motion with their sticks, and I thought they would, you know, jab us, and most likely that would break the ranks, you know. And people started to fall away before they even reached us with a jabbing motion. It seemed like some people at the sides were kind of falling off. And then the uh, next thing I know, some guy jabs me in the groin with a stick and then proceeds to hit me on the head. And by this time, we'd all let go of each other's arms. Assistance, pay attention. I'm James C. Broke Clay, Lieutenant of the Porter Police Department. I now hereby command you all to disperse. Those that do not disperse, those that do not disperse will be considered under arrest. violent or provocative acts by the demonstrators prior to the police action? I saw none. Did the police make uh, any move to remove the dome prior to cracking head? I did not see it. Did you see any incidents or uh, retaliation before the police had been rioting a minute or more? No, I saw none. Did you see police, uh, police beating people that they made no effort to apprehend or arrest? Yes, I saw that. Did you see police beat people who were obviously dispersing and who had their backs turned? Yes, I saw that as well. Did you see police beat people who had fallen or were lying down and offering no resistance? I saw that as well. Did you see instances of two or more police beating an unresisting person? Yes, I saw that. 
Did the campus seem calm and nearly deserted before the arrival of the police? Yes, it did. Okay, I'm a student at Portland State. I was in uh, Vietnam about a year and a half ago. Yesterday morning, I was for the barricades being taken down and for things to get back to normality. The police uh, coming here perhaps to keep order, but they went too far yesterday. I really believe they went too far. They overextended their authority as far as this campus goes. I don't, I don't think the police should be on the campus after yesterday afternoon. Um, violence has, has no place in, in this society, especially on a college campus. Not that they should be exempt from authority and from following rules and regulations set down by society, but they shouldn't be allowed to uh, extend their authority to the extent they did. W will you support the strike now? Well, I paid my money to go to school, and I'd like to go to school, but if this is what it gets down to, I think I would. We shall all be free. ago, about 24 students were hospitalized after being clubbed down while resisting police attempts to clear the park block of the first aid tent after allowing the barricades to be dismantled. President Smith Memorial Center, we're in the ballroom, is now filled with many student group meetings deciding what to do next. There's still an atmosphere of shock and disbelief as stories are told and retold about the day's activities. The first it was believed one student suffered a broken neck, now denied, as about 100 police swept the park blocks in a concerted attempt to end a week of protests and confusion at Portland State University in the wake of the Kent State tragedy. Joe Uris, a graduate student of the Department of Sociology, has been present throughout the week. Joe, can you summarize the week's activity and tell us what the present state is? Uh, with the discovery of the Kent State uh, massacre, an effort was made to organize a student strike on this campus. It was partially successful. There were marches and essentially nonviolent activities, including the building of barricades, built all these events around this campus. On Thursday night, there was a party held here that some people didn't like, uh, several other kinds of little minor incidents. But all in all, throughout all of the events through the weekend, there was no violence on the part of any of the students. I'm, I'm just saying that. So that uh, people, uh, I don't know if they're going to believe me or not, but so that people can understand how bizarre and stupid the actions of the Portland police were, except in one context. The police, well, the police, as I don't know if you're going to be telling or showing that, the police swept in. Uh, they were, they w had the wind at their backs, which meant they could have used tear gas easily. I, I want to emphasize that they could have used tear gas. They had that alternative anytime they wanted it. What they chose to do is wade in with a tactical squad, which they haven't been able to really use in this town yet. And they got a chance to use it and show everybody how strong it is. And I think that was a very major motivation in the, in the, police, the least police part of the action. Now, as to what it's done, it's done just the opposite of what they could have possibly intended by it. It is the single most powerfully unifying force among a, a, a population of people who have interests as diverse 
as people who are totally off campus, probably even drug free, to people who are on very heavy political trips, to people who are just regular straight students, to people who are what were previously the enemy, the jocks. Mm -hmm. And what it's done is it's unified everybody, brought them all together into one camp. And, and right now, as far as I can see, this strike is going to be a hell of a success all over the nation. And I can, just, I can sort of predict that if they continue this kind of repressive tactic in America, there may be those who will enjoy it and those who will think that it works. But it will, it will either lead to the death of this, of this republic entirely through repression, or it will lead to the most important and significant kinds of social change. It unified it. So I think there's going to be two, two factions that are going to split now. One, some people are going to go for the barricade thing. And some people are going to say, well, let's go back to the community. Let's canvas the city block by block. Now, depending upon where your head is and what you'd really like to do, if you think it's constructive and you think it's positive, then do your thing. Did I have your reaction to the march today? Well, I think it's a bunch of horse shit. I don't me. I think these guys are a bunch of kooks. I think they should run them all out. I think they'd get a lot further if they'd clean themselves up and look like clean Americans rather than dirty young men. I'm so disgusted, no. I want nothing to do with it. I thought it was high time that law and order came to Portland. I have no use for it. I, I used to have uh, little crazy ideas when I was about their age, and uh, I grew up. A pretty clear expression, I think, of the way that the college community, the university community, feels about the events the past few days, but particularly about the use of violence by government agents against nonviolent people. And more basically, I think it demonstrates the way that the university community feels about the issues that are being brought out by the strike, the Southeast Asian War, the nerve gas, the elimination of the Panthers. But after last night, I had nothing more to say for Portland Police Department. I am so, I just cried last night for Portland. People looking out of the buildings, signs from supporter in the window. is doing anybody else's and uh, unfortunately I think there should be more people out here with them but who's going to back the students? Why would, uh, what would stop you from joining them if you feel this way too? Nothing stops me. Why do you think I'm walking up here? Oh, you are going to join them now? Yeah. You? Uh, uh, have you marched before you join them? Uh, have, you, have you marched yeah. before? But uh, not with the strike this, this week? No, not at all. The reason I'm joining at this particular time is after what happened yesterday I can't take any more. Uh, there was no call for it. Peaceful uh, disobedience should be met in a peaceful way. They didn't have to bust heads. Uh, are you employed in the community? Yes, are you, I am. So you are giving up work now? Mm, yes, at this moment I am.